Informative classics. Thank you guys for checking out the channel. You are about to listen to an interview I did back in 2020 with David Sloan. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Welcome to the Relationship Stuff 101 podcast here on this Saturday afternoon, October 24th, 2020. Guys, we've all heard stories about haunted dolls before. We've heard the stories about Annabelle. We've seen the Annabelle movies. We've seen child's play. We've seen dolls come to life, harming people, murdering people in, in, in many different ways. We've seen many of these different movies and heard many of these stories before. But many of you might not know the story about Robert the doll. Uh, Robert the doll is considered to be the most haunted doll in America. And I have joining me this afternoon, David Sloan, who basically wrote the book on who Robert the doll is. Uh, David, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, I really appreciate you having me. Uh, I, I talked to Robert and he's very excited about this too. All right. Now, before we, before we even get into it. And, it's, and, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that. We want to go ahead and get permission from Robert, guys. I'm going to tell you, uh, we were supposed to do this interview at 12, and we had some technical difficulties. And I've never had that happen before. I'm going to tell you, David, I've never been on the phone and has, you know, somebody having any type of lag. There's never been no type of lag, and I'm not making this up. And, David, just let me know that when every time we do it, he does something that has to do with Robert, there's always audio uh, difficulties. There are all types of problems when we do things with him, but uh, the thing is we never want to ask permission. That's one of the things out there. You know, the internet has so much inf misinformation about Robert, it is actually very dangerous to ask his permission. Um, but uh, knowing one of the spirits that's inside of Robert, we just let him know what's happening. And, you know, we respect the doll all the time, but, uh, but we never ask permission. So I think Robert's with the technical difficulties that's just his way of saying hey i'm here with you too right right i'm here listening in right i mean um so i'm gonna go you know and being introduced to robert the doll when you, your first experience because i read of course i read your book as i mentioned to you and i see what you said when you when you first went to the artist's house i've read it and i and i, and I employ people to go to get the book you know once we're done Tell me about that first experience. Now, like, what, what was that like? It was really surreal. You know, I went to the artist house, which is the house where Robert lived most of his life. It was uh, the Otto home before it became a bed and breakfast. And I was looking for the ghost of Anne Otto because I had read an article about her. And people weren't talking about Robert a lot. So I go in and I talk to the owner, Daryl, and I said, hey, I'm here to talk to you about your ghost. And he said, oh, you're here to talk about Robert? I said, no, you're talking about Anne. He said, oh, let me tell you about Robert. And he tells me this insane story about a haunted doll that used to live in the house and about how it used to move on its own and how it was blamed for different things and how uh, everybody would say Robert did it. And then he said, do you want to go see the attic room where he lived? And I'm like, well, hell yeah, I do. As soon as he says that, the phone died flew off the hook on the table you know it's back the old school wow. the cord fully extends it snaps back and i look at it like oh my god and he looks at it like nothing like it was an everyday occurrence and then we start to go to head up the stairs and this bookcase the door opens up right in front of me as if to stop me from going any further and then we go up to the second floor and up to the third floor and it's a narrow staircase and it goes to this attic it's back of the house and it's a small room uh, maybe eight by 12 with sloped ceilings. And it was furnished with all of Robert's furniture. It was still set up the way it had been when Robert the doll was there. Little chairs, little tables. It looked like just this creepy kid's tea party about to unfold. And then the room filled with this very negative heat energy. I thought I was gonna throw up if I did not get out of the room. And I thanked Daryl. I said, I said, hey, thanks so much for taking the time to show me. I've got to go. And I left. And here's the weird thing. I went up to the Fort East Martello Museum where Robert the doll 
resides to this day. Okay. But at the time he, he wasn't on display, I went up to see him. I made an appointment and they brought him out and um, the curator was clutching him and talking to him. And I thought, whoa, what a weirdo. And she set him down and I took a couple of photos, but then I went to lift his hat off his head to take another photo. And boom, I tell you, that doll just came alive. You saw something come, you saw the spirit enter him. You saw his eyes change. He didn't like me touching his hat. I tried wow. to take a photograph. My camera did not work. It would not take the photographs. The same negative heat energy filled the room. I thought I was going to throw up if I didn't get out. And at that moment, I knew there was something to rob with the doll. Wow. I mean, because, you know, when people hear, when people hear these, the, the stories, you know, you watch, we watch the YouTube videos, we see people go into these places and we see the, the mediums, they go into these places and the people who deal with paranormal activity, we see them all the time. And a lot of times I believe people don't, they don't really believe the stories. They believe a lot of times the people are really saying these things are not really happening. So I mean, what are what are some of the stories that's attached to it? Because people actually write in letters after they interact with Robert and they actually have things that happen to them and then they start to believe once they have these encounters. Yeah, and I don't blame people for not believing if they haven't experienced it firsthand. Um, you know, with a lot of, I mean, there's so many good shows out there. They need to have advertisers. They need to make money or they're going to get dropped from the network. So they have to have things happen. So, um, you know, it makes great sense for people to be skeptics um, because a lot of what's paranormal out there is paranormal entertainment. And this is the interesting thing about Robert the Doll. You know, Annabelle, everybody says, oh, she's the most haunted doll in the world. But if you count the number of people who have actually had an experience with Annabelle, you could probably count them on one hand. With Robert, since he's been on display, there have been over a million people who have come to Key West and heard his story. But there's been over a thousand letters sent to him from people who say, hey, I'm sorry I disrespected you. Please remove your curse. And there's a lot of things going on. And they talk about different types of things. And here's what I find interesting. Um, certain things reappear in these letters. There's, there's certain things that seem to happen time and time again. And these people aren't talking to each other. So it's not like they're collaborating and saying, hey, let's write a letter that Robert, uh, after we disrespect Robert, our house was struck by lightning. Um, or, hey, let's write a letter about you know, the dead animal we found in our yard. Robert seems to have this control over animals. If he likes people, they have these good animal encounters. If he doesn't like someone, then there's these bad animal encounters. And lightning keeps coming up. There was just a letter that uh, came in last week. And wow. a guy, since he disrespected Robert, his house has been struck by lightning three times. He went on a vacation. The vacation rental he was supposed to stay in uh, was struck by lightning, and he couldn't stay there because it had burned. And then the one he was staying in got struck by lightning. Um, so... There's some pretty interesting stuff, and I think if people come and see Robert firsthand, they'll get that understanding. Right. But I don't blame. I don't blame them for, for being skeptical. I'm skeptical until I see something for myself. Exactly. Like, like share share with us a, a couple of the more bizarre stories you probably heard in in one of these letters that that made you skeptical, but also made you a believer. Well, one of the stories that I think is pretty wild is uh, there was a lady who heard giggling coming from her basement. And when she went downstairs to check it out, she got to the uh, bottom three stairs and she fell. Wow. And then when she got back up to run out because she was so scared, the door to her basement was locked. Um, and, you know, her husband said, you know, she accidentally locked it on her own. But she knows exactly what it was. And she knows it was Robert. And this is really interesting because, you know, there's stories that Gene used to, uh, Gene Otto was Robert's human companion, that he used to put his wife in a closet and hold the door closed you know, so that she couldn't get out. Uh, wow. The lady who donated Robert to the fort, she had him for 14 years and she never had a problem with him. She knew Robert as an innocent child spirit. Uh, but she said that. Um, she was locked in her room and then he held the door up so she couldn't get out. So that's pretty wild. My weirdest thing recently, last night, right before we went to do the tour, I went into Robert's room and I, I love Robert. I have a great relationship with him. There's multiple spirits at work there and I'm very careful which spirit I direct my energy to. 
Uh, because there's one that's a good, innocent, playful spirit, and there's two darker spirits there. And with the one, you know, I was in there uh, right before the tour. I told him, I said, okay, we, you know, we got about 15 minutes. And then I, I felt something crawling on my arm. And I looked down and I saw hundreds of ants on my arm and my shoulder. And I pulled out my flashlight to see how many there were and where they were coming from. And then I felt them bite me simultaneously. But when wow. I turned on the light, there were none, nothing, nothing at all on oh. my arm. But everything was very real. And then when I looked down, I have some, uh, I have like a spirit box and a REM pod and some equipment that I bring out when we okay. spend time with Robert. I looked down and there was a single large ant crawling across my equipment. And wow. I was standing a couple feet away from it, so it wasn't like this ant was on my arm and then it appeared down there. So the only ant in the place is right there by Robert's case. And then I had that, I don't know if it's a transference, I have no idea how to explain that, that happening. Um, but that was very bizarre. And I think that's one of the, you know, I don't know if that's the playful spirit of Robert, or if it's one of the, uh, one of the not so good ones around him. Right. I mean, because I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the speculation that people have, you know, and even what you have in that, that experience there and you mentioning, you know, the Otto family and many people may not know about the Otto family. So, like, give us a little bit about their history, because I, I read when I read the book, it, the history was very interesting to me. The, the, the general consensus is that Robert is possibly created by a slave or some servant that had an uh, issue with the Otto family. And yeah, and that's one of the main theories out there. Um, we've managed to disprove that. I, okay. I discovered that Robert was actually created by the Steiff Company in Germany. Right. And Gene Otto, who is his companion, he, um, if you go back four generations, his grandfather uh, came over from Prussia or Germany. So the Ottos were a German family. Um, and he, his family, they were all doctors. Now, Robert comes over in 1904 when Jean's mother had just come back from a trip from Prussia and he was probably given as a gift to Jean Otto um, on his birthday which is October 25th so wow. tomorrow's, tomorrow's happy birthday. birthday happy birthday yeah. wow yeah, so, um, so Robert remember and, and you know they just developed this bizarre attraction and I like reverse engineering the legends you know because that's the great thing about stories and especially ghost stories. They change with every time someone tells them. Right. And over the course of time, they be, they really separate pretty far from the truth, but they still have that nugget of truth that helps us to research the true story. And with this story about the servant, I said, okay, there's got to be something to it because it's been around for so long. You know, this is one of the original stories in the papers in the, in the 60s and 70s. So I was able to track down William Abbott. And William Abbott was a servant for Gene's grandfather. But they got along great. I mean, they, were, they got along really well. So well, in fact, that when Gene, Gene's grandfather died, Gene's father hired William as a clerk at his pharmacy. And that was right across the street from the Otto family home. And he had a wife named Emmeline, and I found photographs of Emmeline with little Jean Otto, and it looks as if she was a nanny. Hmm. I also found in the newspaper where Emmeline filed a lawsuit against the estate of Thomas Otto, that's Jean's father. And there's mention in one of the family letters that I uncovered where Jean's sister says to the mother, don't worry about Emmeline's lawsuit, she, had, she doesn't have any grounds. Now, lots of records have been destroyed in the U.S. through storms and fires, and just they're not required to, re to keep these court documents, so a lot of them are shredded and don't exist, so I don't know what that lawsuit was about. Uh, but it definitely generates a lot of questions, and it gives us that motive of an angry servant, so to speak. Uh, wow. So... So there is that element of truth. And here's the wild thing. I mean, um, in 1900, Emily and Abbott showed zero children living and zero children deceased in the census. Uh, in 1910, she showed zero children living and one child deceased. 
So she lost a child in that 10 year period uh, that Robert appeared in the house. I believe that her child died. Uh, you know, she would have gone to the house and looked for the doctor to take care of the child. And I, I believe the child passed. And I believe that's one of the spirits inside Robert's doll. Right, right. Because I, I, as I read in as I read in your book, there were people who would see an angry child, and they would they would say that they saw this angry child inside the home. Yeah, uh, I believe it was like a, a light, a light skin. Was it a little girl? Yeah, yeah. A little girl on the back steps. Yeah, on the back steps, and that's probably why Robert was so close to the spirits. For people don't that don't know, I mean, I believe Robert the doll is the size of a little four year old boy. You want to say right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's about four feet tall. He's stuffed with straw. He's covered with fabric. He's got like felt. And uh, he's dressed in a sailor suit. And the sailor suit used to belong to Gene Otto when he was a child. Uh, when Robert first came over from Germany, he was actually a clown. Uh, he, he was wearing a harlequin outfit. So like a clown or a jester, uh, right. as if being a haunted doll is not odd enough. Odd enough, right. Yeah. Being a haunted clown doll. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now, of course, once he came, once he came over, did these occurrences started to happen right away? Like, were they happening right away? Like, soon as he got the doll, these start, this thing started happening. Yeah, we have the stories that uh, his parents used to hear two different voices coming from his room, and when they'd go to look, they'd only find Gene and Robert. And when Gene would get tr in trouble for the things the kids do, he'd say, I didn't do it, Robert did it, and blame the doll. Uh, and they say that he used to take Robert with him everywhere. And there came the time when Gene did leave, you know, um, he went to Paris for many years, and that's when he met his wife, Anne. Right. And when he came back to Key West when his mother was sick, this is in the 1940s, you know, Gene and Anne decided to make their life in Key West. And Anne was a little freaked out to meet Robert the doll. And then when Jean built that special attic room for him, that was a little shocking for her too. She did not like the doll. I talked to the guy who bought the house from the autos, and he said, oh yeah, she absolutely hated the doll. She said it was Jean's only friend. Wow, so even even in his adult years, Robert still had conversations with Jean. Yeah, and you know, Jean died in 1974. He died of Parkinson's disease. And they say that in his wow. final months he, was, he spent all of his time with Robert. No, no, that's now that's interesting. That's interesting. He died of Parkinson's disease, which we all know Parkinson's disease affects the memory. Yeah. Now, with affecting the memory and also is a little bit of dementia in there as well, I wonder if in those later years did he still remember Robert? You know, as he you know go ahead. I think he did. And you know, there's there's some interesting things that happen with the brain and what I've found when it comes to the paranormal I think it's I think our brains are like radio stations and we can just tune a little bit to the left or tune a little bit to the right and just change our frequency and those slight changes can help us perceive things differently um, you know like uh, you and I could be riding in a car and when I get in um, you know I could uh, put uh, rock and roll and you could get in and you could put country music right but the same wavelengths are still traveling through that car we're just not tuned into them and I think uh, a lot of people who have been drinking or using drugs encounter spirits because they have tuned their brains dramatically more to that channel. Uh, I think people that we classify as insane have tuned a little bit more to that, you know, people hearing voices. Uh, and then Parkinson's is a similar thing where, where there can be these delusional behaviors and people can see things and they, they can interpret them a different way. I wonder if that's not a closer connection to the spirit world. You know, when we're growing up, uh, we have imaginary friends, but there's a theory that they're not so imaginary that we are actually seeing spirits. And then we hit an age where our parents say, hey, there's no one there. Turn that off. Right. Um, I think that Gene Otto might have never turned that off. I think maybe he could see spirits through his entire life. Right. And, and I think that was his relationship with Robert. No, uh, I, I've explained. I've explained to my son. My son really loves horror. He loves, the, you know, he's actually, believe it or not, my son is actually the one who introduced me to Robert the Doll. Yeah. Believe yeah, it or yeah, not, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because I was, you know, I only knew about Annabelle. I only knew about, you know, 
the movies of Annabelle and not too old about talking about Annabelle. Now that now that just came to me, and I'm gonna go and go back to my original thought. Did anyone ever think to ask, um, excuse the 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 Warrens to come, you know, check about Robert the Doll to get his story, or you know, because we know no. they did. No one ever re- think to reach out to the Warrens, as far as you know. No, because you know the Warrens were more up in the Connecticut area. They were more up in the Northeast, yeah. and the thing to understand with Robert. So Robert arrived in 1904, but he was pretty much secluded in the artist house until 1974. Okay. And so in 1974, from 1974 to 1980, a lot of stories were coming out about the doll in Key West. Uh, And then he went to the museum in 94, and he was in storage of the museum until 96. So 96, I started the ghost tours, and I started telling his story and, you know, really reviving his story pulling okay. out the documents that existed and then it wasn't until then that the internet took on and Robert's story started spreading outside of Key West right. and by this time the Warrens were pretty old right, right. so they weren't coming out and looking for more investigations to do or anything like that okay. by this time you know and they, they were they were quite happy just having Annabelle okay um, okay you're right so, uh, so I was in Key West um, and I just happened to fall into that role of uh, kind of being Robert's researcher, caretaker. I've had some, uh, God, I've had some strange things happen with him. Because, you know, we did all we knew about Robert when I started were the legends. All right. We've managed to find out so, more, so much more. When I was writing the book about him, though, I didn't realize that we were dealing with multiple entities. Oh, wow. And it created a living hell for me. I lost four hard drives in writing the book. And it was always at the same point every time where I'd, I'd just lose the hard drive. And by the last time, I had everything backed up in every way you could imagine. Every keystroke on my computer was being saved. But still, when I got everything sent back to me, that book was gone. Wow. And then I had things where I was, there was something preying on me and my girlfriend, who's now my wife, in our house. And uh, I was pulled from bed, and it was ter- terrifying to the point that I put out a plea on social media. I said, "Listen, I'm dealing with an entity I can't handle, and I need help." Wow. And uh, uh, somebody put me in contact with a friend of theirs who was a Santeria priest. Santeria is our voodoo down here. Mm-hmm. Um, and he came to check it out. It was some- something he could not deal with on his own, and he brought his family up from Miami, and there were. I think six of us or seven of us, and we did a Misa Spiritual, which is a spirit mass, and they were able to get uh, some of these entities out of me. And it was only after that and through time, and I'm still learning, but now I know who the entities are around Robert or who, who most of them are. And it makes a lot more sense of the story and also gives an understanding and it makes it easier to deal with him without facing all these negative things that people have always associated with wow with so when we when we speak about entities and i not not dislike to keep bringing up did bringing up the annabelle story but we've seen these different entities that was inside of her from the nun to you know uh other other entities that reside inside of her, uh, the bride, and different things of that nature. Now, these entities, as you're talking about in that case, for what, so some of the people can relate to better, or are these like not these just rare? There's just um, how you want to say um, entities that just came about, but these are actually entities that were related to his surroundings let's say gene his dad his granddad the servant like these are people that knew the idols not just entities that just are made just are made up or are well, we talking about what, what I, what I, what I, what I think some of those people who are around the doll uh, are around at the museum i think gene Otto's up there with robert but they're the, the biggest legend about Robert, it's not, not even so much a legend, it's just a lie that's been perpetuated 
um, you know, people say that Robert was the inspiration for Chucky and Child's Play. And there's interviews with the uh, guy who created Chucky and who created Child's Play. And he says, no, you know, it was inspired by the My Buddy doll and by blatant consumerism. It has nothing to do with Robert. But it's such a good story that people like telling it. Right. And they want this they want this doll to be evil. And what happens when people want this evil doll, they go up to the museum and they see Robert and they want him to be the killer. They want him to be the doll who, uh, you know, who tried to suffocate a 10 year old girl, even though that never happened. Right. And when they bring this energy, there's other entities that will fill in. You know, Key West mm. is one of the most haunted cities in the world. Uh, it was built on, it was one giant Native American burial ground. You know, wow. it was a coral reef at one time. They talk about a uh, lot coralline limestone. Limestone can be something that draws spirits to the earth and traps them there. Salt water can be difficult for spirits to cross over. And they think that um, there might be so many entities because of all of these things. And so if you think about the number of portals people talk about in Key West, it ties in with the different Indian burial mounds, in, in right. my belief. Uh, so I think that there are all these areas where there are crossing points between the different worlds. And I won't pretend to understand the other worlds or, or you know, why these portals exist or how they exist. Uh, what I do believe is that there are a lot of spirits out there looking for energy. And there are a lot of entities out there looking for energy. And I believe that they will pretend to be whatever you're talking about to get that energy. Right. So when people bring this chunky energy to the museum, there's these entities and it seems that two of them have risen to the risen to the top of the pecking order. And there's two of them that are just boom, yeah, we'll come in. And they say, Yeah, we'll follow you to your house and we'll kill an animal. Yeah, we'll we'll uh, go uh, strike lightning down on you. And they they've almost become like Robert's um Protective. Robert's mean parents is, is kind of his protectors. Right. And I don't think he shares their their morals or their values, but they're there and when people come looking for that evil doll energy they are happy to deliver you know that makes me think about the shining the hotel itself is the hotel itself was almost like those ghost burial that, 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 that was their house so when you came into that house they were protecting that hotel you know and we see we seen jack nicholson encounter one of the ghosts and they, you know, they start to do different things to him. He was not, he was not insane when he came to the hotel. Right. So when you come to the museum, you may be sane, but then you start to interact, like you said, in a negative manner, and you already have this energy because we know his character was already slightly abusive to to his wife. He was already slightly abusive, so they took that energy, that negative energy, and they fed off of it. Yeah, and, that's and the spirits it. will lock on to the different types of energy, and, and that's what they'll do, you know. They need to weaken you in order to get in. And once they find that way to get in, you know, they can start modifying your thoughts, and they can start changing your behaviors. And then when you start getting fearful, once that fear sets in, then they've won the battle because you're not going to be able to pull out of it very easily. And they can go in deeper and deeper and deeper and make it worse and worse. Oh, wow. And then that's a lot of things that people people don't take the time to learn about these different entities. And I, and I think people who, are, as we mentioned, who are non-believers in faith and who are non-believers in the spirit world, they start to come up with their own understanding of what they believe. And then when they encounter it, they don't believe it themselves. Like I like I, my, my kids asked me, do you believe in ghosts? And I explained that ghosts and spirits are different, you know, and I said, I believe in spirits. I don't believe in ghosts. I do believe in spirits. And I've had one paranormal encounter in my whole life uh, back when I was in high school. Um, a guy had just had just killed himself a week prior to when this happened. And I was walking up the stairs in a, in a, in a, uh, in a school and all of a sudden the door came open. So when I walked through the door, there was a flower on a locker. Now, nobody was in the hallway, of course. Nobody was there. Nobody was around. When I came right through the door, nobody was, you know, was present. There was nothing there but the flower. 
So then when I came back out, I had to, you know, go to the restroom and I came right back out. The flower was gone. Now, I, of course, of course, I shut that off. Being a kid, you shut these things off. You don't think nothing of it. You know, as we get older, and you mentioned that earlier, as we get older, we no longer see these things as something to pay attention to. That's the reason why we see in a lot of movies, I believe, we see these entities, they attack children. Because like you said, children are more innocent. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting, when it comes to dolls in general, you know, we look at them as toys now, but originally the first dolls, which would have been in Egypt and in Africa, they were used in ceremony. blessings from the gods and to bring the spirit world closer to us and then we started giving these dolls used in the ceremonies to children and we'd use them to teach the children about the spirit world and about the gods and the, it eventually evolves to toys but there's always been this spirit connection between um human replicas wow and the spirit world i mean it's so like the whole haunted doll thing makes so much sense and there's something called the uncanny valley and it talks about a human's emotional response to something that looks human and you know we have a very positive impact like when we see a teddy bear right and we think okay that's cool um, and then when we see another human we it has a very positive impact but in between those two, there's this level of lightness, or like if we see a prosthetic leg, or if we see Robert the doll, it's something that looks almost very human, but it's missing something, and it doesn't have that human intelligence, and it creeps us out, it fills us with a sense of dread, and we just don't understand it. We call that the uncanny valley, and that happens with a lot of these dolls. Right. You know, it's just that human gut reaction. Uh, and that you know had the spirit world <laughs> as a, yes and then and, and i mean and as we you know as we we, we come to come to a close oh give give people like one thing when they when you come when they come to visit robert the doll when they come to key west and they they put key west down as a vacation or they plan to visit the east martello museum what's the best thing to understand when you come in to visit because we just talked about all these entities we talked about respecting robert the doll we talked about you know respecting key west and as a whole what is that one thing you would like people to know well, before people, do need to respect robert. Uh, I mean, people need to stop asking permission it's very dangerous and it's another one of those legends that just doesn't die and the internet will tell you oh, you better ask permission I just want people to know that they're putting themselves in danger if they ask for permission. So stop asking permission, uh, be respectful, and give love to the Robert, this the innocent little child there, because that's that's the spirit who needs our attention. Yes, yes, definitely. Show respect. Don't listen to the internet. Don't what you watch on YouTube is only for entertainment, as you mentioned. It's paranormal entertainment. Yeah. So as if you yeah. want to, if you want to find out the real story about Robert the Doll, uh, do yourself a favor, get on Amazon and uh, read David's book. Uh, David, uh, you want to go ahead and give him ways to contact you, uh, the name of the book, and uh, different things of that nature. Yeah, the book is called Robert the Doll, and it's available on Amazon. It's, it's the true biography of Key West haunted doll. Uh, and it's a week up at the fort. So after dark, we turn off the, you know, dim, dim the lights. It's an hour long tour where we actually get to sit down with Robert for 30 minutes and we read him letters and I've got the spirit box and the REM pod and I tell you the true story about Robert and how to get through there without having a curse. Um, so uh, people can come visit me for that. We just launched a late night lantern lockdown where people can hunt ghosts in the dark forts because Robert lives in an 1862 civil fortress and that's real cool. Wow. But people can read all about what I do on ghostfort.com. Uh, and then on social media, we're um, at Key West Ghost Fort. All right. So with that said, David, I want to I want to thank you for taking the time out to have this interview with me. I want to go ahead and thank Robert. We that we all we all want to take 
the time to understand many different things before we spread any type of negative messages or put any type of negative energy into something that's not supposed to be looked at as being negative. So I want to I want to say that as well. So with that said, again, David, thank you for taking the time to do this interview with me. I appreciate you having me on. I'm a big fan. So right. I look forward to coming back again next year. All right. Thank you, David. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.